Sometimes it's important to ask, why am I being told to do that? Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and today we are gonna talk about tourniquets. Uh, now, full disclosure, I carry a tourniquet in my pocket uh, every day. It's something I've done for a while. I also carry the Dark Angel uh, pocket medical kit thing. And I carry that in my pocket uh, every day, right? When I leave the house and stuff, it's just, that's what I carry. And uh, I've been thinking about this recently, but why are we told to carry a tourniquet every day? Now look, look to be clear, I'm not saying you should not carry a tourniquet. Again, I do, uh, but I think it's important to understand why. We always talk about how tourniquets are life-saving devices, right? And it can save your life. And that's true. What you need to do is you need to go back and look at, or just listen to me and believe me, you can do what you want here. But when you go back and look at when tourniquets started getting used a lot, it was around 2007, if I remember right. Uh, when we started going into, or after we'd been there for a while in Afghanistan and Iraq. And that's really when we tourniquet use kind of went through the roof. Before that, your common everyday soldier really didn't carry a tourniquet. They really didn't have an IFAC. And one of the primary reasons that tourniquets were so effective at saving life was because soldiers in GWAT wore body armor. They wore body armor and they wore helmets. So when your main organs are covered with ceramic or metal plates, right, front and back, and your, your brain computer here is covered with a helmet, what's left to get injured? Well, right, primarily your limbs, right? And then that's where most bleed outs came from when people get hit in an artery or get their arm blown off or shot or you know otherwise injured and you needed a way to stop the bleeding. So we put tourniquets on it to stop the bleeding, right? Now, you in your everyday life probably don't wear body armor. Maybe you do, but if you do, either that's part of your job uh, or you're just in one of like the super, super low percentage of people who actually wear armor every day, right? Maybe you wear like a soft under armor thing or whatever, uh, or soft armor under your clothes or whatever. But most of us, vast, vast majority of us do not. So what does that mean? That means that you have a much higher likelihood of getting injured right in here in this place that you can't tourniquet. Right? So my question to you is how much value does that tourniquet really bring to you? Now, again, I'm not saying don't carry a tourniquet. I carry one. I'm going to keep carrying one and you probably should carry one too. But I think it's important to understand the context of where these things come from. We carry tourniquets because people in the military started carrying more tourniquets because they had a lot more limb injuries because they were wearing armor that prevented injuries to other areas. Therefore, that was the only thing left to injure, and so tourniquets were super effective at stopping people from dying, because again, that was the only thing left to injure was the limbs. So again, important, understand where the thing comes from and how it may or may not apply to your use case. Again, for the 10th time, I'm gonna keep wearing a carrying a tourniquet, you should probably carry a tourniquet too, but I think it's worth asking the question, is that really applicable to my situation? Is that really valuable to my situation? And will it help me the same way that it helps those other people who wear body armor? Because it may or may not, depending on what you decide and what trade-offs you want to make. So I hope that's helpful. I hope it gives you a little food for thought. I don't think we should just carbon copy stuff and take it at face value because that's what we do in the gun world. We should actually think about what it is that we're doing. Do brave deeds and endure.